So we should get this uh, piston ring off since we're not going to use it anymore. And uh, just to help get this area clean also, and the ultrasonic cleaner, you know. It's all inside of there. You want the groove is going to get carboned up and dirty so over time. So we want to get that cleaned up. We'll put that in the ultrasonic cleaner along with us.
So working on a pull start is one of those things you just don't want to do when you're uh, hungry or tired. Any kind of depletion is going to be uh, going to amplify the the best of you. Sarcasm intended. Yeah. So let's just pull this apart. This is five uh, five thirty seconds. Yeah. And you probably want to put some glasses on because we are working with a spring that's under tension. So we need to see what's going on. It's slipping, and I think it's just uh, either the tab. I'm not sure, but we'll figure it out. That's that. Uh, just to let you know, this they did a really nice thing for us, the manufacturer of this. It's, you know, sometimes you probably wonder, like, what's the length of this? Well, lucky for us, they wrote it right here. It's a 990 millimeters rope length. It's written right here. I was, uh, I didn't expect that. I don't know if you can see it or not, but that's what it says right there. And uh, so we just unscrewed that. I like to, um, as you can tell, from other pull starts have kind of messed with. I need to write down orientation because it can get a little confusing. So I'm going to lift this off, see what's going on. So, okay, so the rope. went like that. Right, that's the rope. Okay. It's a tab. Okay, so It does look fine. I don't see any issues with the actual uh, spring itself. Yeah. I am gonna have to uh, gonna lube it a little bit and then uh, yeah, we'll, we should grease it. Yeah, grease or oil? Uh, I'm confused. What should I do? Oh, let's do some three in one. Uh, let's do that after we wind it up. We'll at least make a better assessment. So what I think has happened is that this is just a little too loose. You know, and that sits in here. And so, so you pull that way. Right, so that means you gotta wind it up like this. See what I'm saying? Okay, so. Pulls out that way, so go back.
other side of a tangled mess. you're enjoying this. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking I can go like this. Don't want that to happen. All right. Yeah, let's go around one more. So I'm putting some tension on the spring, and then I'm gonna wrap the we'll start here. There you go. Yep, that's good, that's good, that's good. All right, we're good, that feels good. Let's put this back on. Oof, that was intense. Wait, did I oil it? No. You know what I'm gonna do? I have to squeeze some oil in here on the side. Thanks for letting me know. Don't forget to oil it. Nothing too crazy again, because remember you're going into plastic with you know, how tight you, how much you tighten this. So. Wow. All right, that's. Let's spend some time uh, getting this uh, bar cleaned out. So the bar has a little valley. Right, you want to get something just kind of. Just gonna want to clean the uh, whatever is built up inside of there. Oil, uh, dirt, any um, debris. Uh, just need to get that as clean as possible. So we we'll use that. Will fit. Really? Let's try this. What would be best is to have like a uh some sort of high pressure liquid you can kind of blast at it, you know? 
That'll give you a better, cleaner job. That'll do a better job cleaning the valley of the, um, the groove of the actual uh, bar. Now, a good thing to pay attention to is uh, the bar itself, the lip. It, it tends to get egged out. As it'll, it'll like, instead of being perfectly flat, because as the chain runs over it, it kind of like eggs it out. And you want to uh, just make sure that the bar itself is uh, not warped. Not, I mean, not warped, but I meant like uh, the top is not, on the outside, it's not egged like this, folded over. If it is, you can just take a metal file. I'm sorry, a file for metal. And then uh, just kind of get it flat again. It's got a lot of shmoo. These teeth here are also pretty dirty. So now we want to just kind of clean this a little with a little WD-40. So it's a little scotch bright. It's WD-40. <laughs> I want to press this uh, piston I guess it's a rod back, not a rod, but uh, you know, it just holds the head on. And uh, I'm unsure, I try to pound it in and press it in. So I kind of set this up like that to see if we can get it in. And uh, my thoughts are, yeah, I think it should be possible, you know. Anyway, so uh, I want to get some uh, assembly lube and kind of place it in here just to help uh, this uh, slide. And, uh, oh yeah, for those of you, that's uh, Permatech Ultra Slick engine lube. And uh, when we took this off, it was uh, the the retainer pin was on this side. Yeah. So something like this. So we had to do. So I'm 
I thought so. We should have kind of pressed this in. Yeah. Make sure turn it like that. Yeah, that's better. Oh my god, I'm smart. Yeah, it's going in. the hole. Okay. Wow, that was too easy. Alright, this is another example of why you kind of need a press. It makes life easier instead of just a, uh, you know, press, two-ton press, floor press. That's it. Let's put the, uh, let's see if we can So I need to push this in just a little bit more, right? So I am going to use a socket. I have a quarter inch socket here. I want to kind of like put on that. Be a little tricky. I can feel it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Almost. There you go. That's so much better. Now that's better, then I'm just going to try to pound it in. Right, this is to give myself a fighting chance, the container, uh, because uh, I'm going to try to put, we are going to try to put this retainer spring back right here. And I'm concerned that it might have a lot of, uh, a lot of bounce. And if it bounces, I hope we can probably um, catch it before it, uh, goes too far away. I could be wishful, but it's my best ability to try to minimize. So it's like tricky. You gotta Get it in the groove. Come on. Gotta get it in that groove. I think that's idling a little high. <laughs> yeah, that guy's been struggling trying to fix his little two-stroke. I tried to help him the other day. There you go, we did it. I tried to help him the other day. It's like, 
12 o'clock at night and he's getting ready to go ride this thing. And he's out there pulling for like 30 minutes and it won't start, right? And then, uh, just double check and make sure it's in the groove. So I go outside, I was like, oh, just to offer a little help. Of course he said the most ghetto thing to me. Oh yeah, it's not working because the, uh, fuel tank has no gas cap on it. I was like, wow. So, let me tell you. There was one point I heard the damn thing started, right? So that means, like, at least it worked at one point. So he should know that, oh yeah, there's that moment when it did work. And that's when it had the, the fuel tank. But then he uh, obviously decided that one and two must not make three. Wait, it does make three in his world, sorry. Not two. And uh thought it was a good idea to continue to try to get it started. He doesn't understand he needs to be pressurized. So, anyway, I guess he must have gotten a new tank or duct taped it. Yeah, I was thought this was the right ring, but we gotta get another ring. We have the ring. We just gotta... Alright, so here's the ring. And, uh... Tempted to use a little engine engine lube to help us get this uh, over the hump. It's going to be a real pain in the butt. Just remember that there, there is a... Uh, right there. You can see that little dimple right there. Okay. Well, that... The, uh, the, the ring itself has a... That's hard to see, maybe. But the curved part of the ring... Uh, Okay, it it dips down. It dips down like this, but that dip down part has to be at the bottom. Okay, and uh, yeah, so let's just give it a shot. Ooh, kind of want to clean this off a little bit. Whenever you're working with. Uh, like engines, you want to make sure everything is as pristine as possible because any particulates inside of the engine over time acts like a um, like a sandpaper. Okay, so that here's the part number for the Barons. It's uh, X zero zero one Q. XQ seven A D and these it comes in a two piece, you know you probably won't need two, but I don't need two, but that's what that's how it came. So it goes to the hoard, the extra. So that's what we have. We have a Baron like that. Baron cap that is. So, oh, that's interesting. So we can actually keep the Baron in there. Save the Baron. Let's save the Baron, because the Baron is fine, right? Let's lose the cap. Can we lose the cap easily? That I do not know. Actually, I think we can get rid of this pan. I, 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 I don't foresee us. anything okay here we go okay so this barren cap here is what I bought this for now the spring hmm you know what? Let us mark this spring. Let's see if it's anything special. Right. So it's marked. And then uh, I'll pull the spring off. All that spring does is just keep this from flying off, you know? Uh-huh. 
Maybe we need to, yeah, we got to do It's a real pain in the butt. Uh, what can we do to get that off? Uh, there. Yeah, all right, that's not gonna work. All right, I'm open to suggestions. Something so simple. So hmm. Alright, you see what I'm going to do. This might be a little hard to see, but this spring is actually sitting in a groove. And uh, that's what's making it hard to get off. Let's 
Success! We got that off. Okay, let's see if we can get the new. Here's the Baron. It's fine, doesn't have any crunchiness to it. Hmm. Let's set up and see if we can get that on. So I decided that I don't need to be cheap. I got an extra Baron, and I don't foresee myself like uh, being too much of a bind at, at this moment. So this is the old Baron. Right? This is the new Baron. And you can see that it has, let's just make sure it's the same size. Yes, the diameter is the same. Okay. And we... Well, I thought about just, you know, getting the rubber boot off, but I don't know, that's a bit of a fight. Let me just, like, put that in here, right? So before we do that, let's uh, just just double check, make sure what we see here makes sense for both sides. Okay, I didn't see anything special, so get some assembly lube. So just put it on the lips of that to make it a, a little easier. So, I don't know how much force we'll need to press it in. It's already wonky, as you can tell. Let's push that back out. So when you press bearings in, you want to make sure you uh, get things as lined up as possible, you know? And this setup won't work, so we're going to have to do something uh, a little different. Uh, like this. Oops. Something like that. Perfect piece of scrap wood is a lot harder than you think. Oh, here we go. I got the triangle back. There we go. Triangle. Come on. Get a press, everybody. Get a press. It's kind of shenanigans you don't have to deal with with a press. At least, not like this anyway. And when you uh, press bearings, you want to push on the reese, on the outer reese. At least these types of bearings.
Oops, right. not too happy with that. It's just all wonky. I might just, just bang on it, so. So I have a three-fourth socket. The best way to do this is you, you take the old bearing and you put it on top and then you pound it in because it's the same diameter, but I don't want to ruin that bearing. You know, if I ruin this. So I'm just gonna like try to tap and you can see how it's a little crazy high on that side. So I'm gonna go on that side the most first. It's nice and weird. Okay. Let's uh, put some. Let's spray some lubricant in there. That was WD-40 in that bulb. This thing just does not want to settle in. It's going in all right. The wrong way. point do you back off? <laughs> uh, let's see. Come on. Hmm. That's a little better. Maybe not. Little pain in the butt. What are you thinking? Back to the vice, maybe? Let's see. So, most of the pressure on the vice is going to be on the top. So. Bad and good at the same time. Good it went in, bad that we were like pushing such a weird angle to make it like have to pop like that, you know? Alright, so that's the new.
All right, we should probably grease this up. I'm gonna use a little bit of this uh, silicone glide. So this is good for uh, brake pads, calipers, rubber boots, fan belts, V belts, weather strips, whatever. We're gonna rock it now. Alright, that's that. And uh, let's try to put that back on this. Shall we? Where's my sock? Hard to get off, hard to get on most of the times. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> oh man, it's gonna happen. Doesn't make sense. That might be a better orientation. Well, that's going to be a challenge. All right, I'll struggle with it off camera. So this is how you do it. You want to go underneath it 
I guess you want to push down and turn at the same time. Push down and turn until it gets to the groove it sits in. it right there. Spring is in the groove. It won't go anywhere. Alright. Make sure you don't scratch this boot, poke it or anything like because it's an oil seal. Let's prep this carburetor for cleaning. Uh, we have a... This is the carburetor for the um, Craftsman. I'm going to pull this old... Uh, Hardened fuel line off here. The chainsaw that is, Crossman chainsaw. That's good. Okay. So now that we have that off, we want to get this out of here. So let's see what it looks like. So that's the orientation. When this is all the way up, like this, that's closed. Turn it that way, that goes down, like that. Right. So I should be able to unscrew this and just kind of pull this out. So it looks like... Looks like that. Alright. And... Uh, Let's see, we should be able to get the butterfly off of here, right? So, butterfly's off. There you go. And then this should be able to slide right out, maybe? No? Yes, no. Yes. Yep. Ah! Oh. Uh huh, don't lose that. Mmm. We gotta be careful here. We have ourselves a, a check valve with this ball joint here. So you kind of like it right here, this ball bearing sits like that. It's right behind this. So do not lose that. And it goes into the bag. Triple checking that it made it into the bag. So that'll ruin your day if you don't have that. Yes, it's in the bag. Okay. Alright, so we have butterfly apart. I'm gonna take these off. Let's just do the uh, let's do the low first. This is the low I'm, low side I'm working with first. I think I'm gonna have a hard time getting that thing back in. When I think about it. Well, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Well, that's the low. Hmm. 
Hmm. That spring just fell out of something. Alright, we gotta pay attention to stuff here. Where did that spring come from? Is it in here? I don't know where this swing came from. Alright. Things keep getting more and more complicated. I like it. So I'm going to look at this carburetor and check out the anatomy of it. Okay, the low and the high. Here we go. So, what's the difference? The, the high is has a wider diameter, so there's no way you can kind of mess it. You can't mess it up. It'll never screw in. Okay. Can't mess it up. seat we need to remove. to see it. cameras being blurry. It's a small Phillips. I'm not sure why I didn't zoom down more. I'm so sorry. Pull that out. In the spring. So this is uh, all separate, I mean um, pulled apart, so we should be able to uh, give that a good bath. So we have the old gaskets uh, laid out. These are the new ones here. I'll move this over so you can see. These are the new ones, and these will replace these older ones here. So. You want to lay them out before you uh, make sure you have all the right, they match up, you know. Alright, so we got to put this needle and seat back. It tends to be the most treacherous part of this process. So, um, yeah. I'd recommend getting a... Uh, Way to like do this or so the first thing we want to do is put the uh, spring right here you notice that I'm not using any gloves this is because I am um, amount of dexterity that I need is pretty high so all right with the spring in place all right, we're gonna get the needle and the seat so, like that. It just kind of sits right there like that. Mm -hmm. 
That was awesome. Just fell right in that hole. Okay. Usually that's a little bit more cumbersome. Did that line up? No. That spring did not line up. It didn't line up because it's upside down, that's why. Not the religious type, but somewhere around now I start praying for all something, some divine intervention. Can be a little tricky getting this thing. I think that's it. Yeah, that is actually lined up. Okay. All right, that's lined up, right? Oh boy, here we go. So we take this Phillips here. Let's make sure it's uh make sure you are not stripping this screw. This had to be crazy tight. All right, so that is that. I should be more prepared, but I'm not. Uh, we have to get the Walbro tool for this. All right, so this tool here right, helps us with the levels. Make sure we get our levels right. So this has to have a certain amount of clearance. That's a, a certain level, you know? So if it's too low, you gotta go up. If it's too high, you gotta push it down. So what you do, you find, you use your wall bar tool, right? And uh, it's important that this matches the right level because if it doesn't, it'll flood the engine or it'll run it too lean. You'll have some issues with like uh, idling or um, what the power at the high end of the uh, RPMs. So we know that the this is a WT, so we find WT, which is right here. Right? It's written. It's got a whole bunch of letters everywhere. And you go like this. Go here. And I this touches too much. And so we want to Kind of push this down a little bit, just a little. So I'm gonna hold the needle down and just bend this down a little bit. Okay, put this back. And now it clears it without touching it. All right, so that, that looks good to me. Um, we should probably check, see if it holds pressure. Now let's test this. So we have a, a little cap of water here, and uh, i get this all set up. So 
I use the water to um, help get a good seal. So when things are dry, they tend to don't seal up well. I want to show you the issue. If you look right here, I sprayed some WD-40 on top of that, right? You see how the air is bubbling up? Yeah. So that needle is not... It's not holding, you know? It should, it should be flat like this and pushed into there. There's no leakage whatsoever. Lay bubbles. Okay, so with uh, I'm gonna give you see, since you see what let you see what I'm talking about. You might not be able to see, but we'll do our best. Mm -hmm. Just like that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to hold this down, right? Yep. Sure enough, it just doesn't sit. So we might need to replace this needle. I was thinking that we can probably, uh, we wouldn't have to do, you know. But it's looking like we're going to have to do the needle and the spring on this one. Yeah. That's me pushing down. It's just not sealing. Okay, cool. That's it. So we're going to have to switch to the needle and seat. If that doesn't work, then the carburetor shut. Let's place the new needle in seat in this and see if it makes a difference. It's perfect. Okay. So that if everything goes well should be better. Now let's uh, let's test this back it out so you can see.
pressure. Interesting. This kind of leaks. It's just blowing bubbles. See that? to do. Maybe we can try. Let's move forward with this. Uh, we can uh, resolve other things later. So this has uh, this gasket on top like that. Now the original gasket uh, did not have, I'll show you something, it did not have that little hole there. This is what it looked like. That's the original. I'm going to zoom down a little more. Okay. The original gasket is this. You can see that that doesn't have that, um, that part in the back. So, no need to worry. It doesn't block flow of any fluids or air. Okay. Then we take uh, the diaphragm that goes down into the hole. We cap this off. Hmm. That's not good. Do I have the wrong part? Hmm. Interesting. I think I do, don't I? Have the wrong part that is. No, I don't. I like got okay. Uh, whatever. This uh, Philips is a 1. This is a P2. These are. So I need to go to P2 to keep them stripping. Passages need to line up. So those passages line up. And then we need to get the screw for that. So 
this is uh, keyed, so it shouldn't be too hard to get it right. Oh, so we got some shenanigans we gotta do here with this, uh... Okay, that spring, that weird spring that we talked about, that spring is actually sits behind, uh, the... Okay, so here's the choke. It's a, it's the choke spring. You know, so it goes... So the choke goes in here, like that, right? And... I'm using this because I'm really... Just concerned that I'm gonna have this thing go flying all out of the place. So that string goes down inside of there. Right? That's what I thought would happen. Okay, this spring sits there going. Well, okay. It happened so fast. Okay. So now that's all the way in there. Okay, so the ball bearing. I don't want to lose that. So the spring will push up against the ball bearing, and uh, I need to lose these gloves. that in there like that right and this goes through here like that so you like it clicks so that's what that's that's a good sign Okay, that wasn't too bad. Let's put the butterfly back. So this butterfly... Is that right? Hmm. Let's see why not. Right. So this is the orientation of it. I just need to make sure when it closes and opens, it uh, looks right. So that is how that's supposed to be. So like that. Nice and flat against that. Magnetize this. Well, 
what I do, I just touch it against the magnet a little bit. Just to, oops, sorry, just to help get it magnetized. That does not look right. <laughs> What's going on? Mm -hmm. that, that does not look right, does it? Yeah. Alright. Let's try that again. Like that. That's a good song. Somewhere beyond the tree, somewhere waiting for me. Yep, that looks good. All right, let's get uh, some idler screws back in. I really mess these up because um, the uh, the diameters are uh, different. So this will be the low. And this is going to be the high. The high is uh, wider in diameter. this one first, make sure I get a feel for what's happened, so I'm not cross-threading anything. Okay, that feels good. So I'm going to bottom it up lightly. Don't, don't, don't screw it in hard because it's a needle. Um, back it out one and a half times. I mean, it's got a, a sharp point. That's to regulate the fuel and air mixture, so you don't want to damage the, the tip. Okay, that's bottomed out. One, one and a half. Okay. It's just a good starting point, you know. Sometimes two is a better starting point, but whatever. Okay, that's bottomed out. Half, one, one and a half. Okay. So we're going to try to use this stuff make a gasket and uh, when I bought it it didn't come with any uh, tip so 
I'm going to use this tip from my other gasket. Maker. Right. So, it's going to get interesting. So, I. <clears throat> Get into a less off. All right, it says here, uh, <clears throat> give this, uh, you know, make sure it's all clean and dry, which it is, free of dirt and oil, yes. This is put a continuous bead on both surfaces, smooth material with small brush. Allow to set for one minute, assemble maiden surfaces using normal Torx specifications. So we're going to... Take this here. I'm gonna put this back into the chainsaw. So we're going to need uh, some assembly lube put this piston back in. Um, I don't really see why I need to put the gasket material on both sides, but we'll do it. Looks like because I have enough on the other side, you know. Anyway, either way, we'll do it. A little lighter on this side, I suppose. Okay. So it's been like a minute. So this is where it gets really dicey. Right. Gonna put this in here. Okay, that's in, right? We gotta get this piston ring, make sure that is lined up with the little hole, right? And then we're going to need some assembly lube. So we're going to take some assembly lube, right? And it would be a good idea to kind of coat 
the outside of this just to help get in it in. Right. Okay, again, make sure the ring is right where that tab is. Okay, so you got lots of assembly lube. Very generous. The next thing is Okay, the orientation is the spark plugs towards the uh, the gun, right? So, all right, here we go. It's been sitting for a minute. So we want to squeeze. That push it down. I turn this piston. I want to see it move. Okay, works well. Okay. I don't know where that came from. I remember this. It was stuck to the magneto right there. Uh, I remember it clipping something, and I don't know. Uh, might not even be from this project. Okay. The old leftover part. bolts. This looks like five. That's awesome. That looks like six. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Should I have four? like the confusion. So let's see, what do we need? We need a uh, wrench. This is a five sixteenths.
All right. Remember, one of these is kind of weird. I don't know which one it is. We gotta f figure that out. No, I didn't, I didn't over torque it because I wanted to uh, make sure we, uh, the right bolts in so I gotta okay so this is the uh, odd one it's on the opposite side of those so that would be this one with that lump on it is it a lump what is that so just as a gasket maybe I'm just making it all up well I totally am those bolts doesn't matter. I thought that it was like something rigid when I pulled it off initially. And then uh, upon close inspection, it's actually a piece of rubber. Hmm. Wow. Go team awareness. Looks like we're all click torqued up. Click, click. All right. So that is a nice squeezed out lot of gasket there. Huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Remember this. This goes on. Let's slide that in. All right. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about these gaskets, right? Um, these are the three gaskets that we took off right here. All right, right now we're going to work with the exhaust one. This is our gasket kit. So it's part number. It's a Poland kit gasket. Five, that's like Japanese probably, anyway. Or Chinese. They put that weird it should be gasket kit, you know? Anyway, uh, the, uh, the part number is five. Three zero zero six nine six zero eight. It's Poland gasket kit, and this is the kit we're going to use to replace this stuff. And um, let's just match the gasket first. So, okay, that matches. So this is the first gasket we're going to put on. Uh, we so remember this uh, had a blowout right here. Can you see it? Yeah, you can. Yes, you can. See the hole right here at the bottom? Sorry. Right there. Uh, maybe you can see it there. Right there. See the, the light coming through? Hello? Okay. So this is blown out. Now, if uh, what I've done, right, is uh, I've taken the... This is from the other chainsaw, and they are exactly the same. It didn't really change this much, which is kind of cool for me. Or did they? Mm-hmm. 
Oh. Yeah, that looks about the same-ish, same enough. Anyway, let's just give it a try. So, I just need the back part, right? Yeah, because I already cleaned that, right? And that just kind of sits in there, lined up. Perfect. Get ourselves a match. Okay, so let's move these gaskets to the side. And uh, the muffler goes in front right here, and it's keyed. So we're going to do something like this. This went on first, like that, right? Okay, and then this was like that with those two long bolts that I was a little confused about. Okay, so I should you got to make sure the baffle inside is lined up. See, so right there, those. <laughs> Why did I have to make so much noise bending over? Oh boy. Okay, so right there, those have to line up like that. See? Okay, so it's those two. Is this it? There, they happen to be the same ones that hold the uh, piston in. All right, and uh, all right, let's get this muffler on. This goes like this. Now what I did, I you know. I placed some uh, Permatech gasket sealant on there. I'll do a little bit more, so just to make sure. Alright, so we got that. You don't have a lot of time before this turns into like Spider Man's little less web, I mean. So. Use the bolts to uh, line up the baffle. Oops. So the baffle here. We want to use these bolts here to line up. The baffle like that. Go like this. Slide that through. Mm hmm. This had uh, two screws that went into it, and they were uh, like smaller ones, a little bit of a bigger pitch. So I believe it was these. These two. This is what I think. Huh. So one 
is there. Let's talk about what's next. This is the gasket for the uh, carburetor. And uh, you can see it's a little different from this one. So here's the new one, right? So I have to line it up. It has a, it's keyed like that. But that's the hole right there. So get this off like this, right? And that should sit like that. Yeah, and then that goes into there like that. So something like this. There's a rubber boot that goes around that right here. Let me get that. sits in here like this Let me just check and see if there's anything odd about it, both sides. Uh, it's, it's, uh huh. Look at that. A little cut out there. I wonder if that has to do with that side down there. Yep, that definitely fits better. Okay, so like that, right? Oh. Let's put some gasket sealant. <laughs> that humming was the sound of me trying to remain zen. So we're going to go into metal, and that means we're going to have to use some finer threaded bolts. So it has to be these, because those are the only ones that are from the 
set that's uh, threading is a little different. Ugh, it's going to be a little hard to do because I should have done this when it was uh, apart. There's a bolt down here. That's uh, it's going to be a pain. <laughs> yep, that's about right. I didn't tell you this, but uh, I mean, I didn't show it to you. But these two bolts, they slide into the back of this cover. So. Right. And uh, the bottom bolt. So that goes down here, and uh, uh, yeah, like I said, you sh should have screwed this on. Uh, a little earlier, maybe. Well, either way, it's uh, it's on now. Okay, so I'm gonna screw this up off camera. Again, this is 5:30 seconds. Let's get that in there like that. this maybe. Okay, what's up? 